Until fairly recently, face transplants were the stuff of science fiction and Hollywood movies. They only became a medical reality 11 years ago and the procedure has never been carried out in the UK. Now a team of Scottish surgeons is ready to change all that. However, they can't get NHS bosses to back them. Scotland Tonight's James Chain has this exclusive report. It's one of the most complex medical procedures possible and it's taken place fewer than 50 times worldwide. This was one of them. The man on the operating table, American firefighter Patrick Hardison, says the operation last year renewed his life. Face transplants might be rare and revolutionary, but a team of Scottish surgeons is ready and waiting to carry them out. The collection of specialists is based mostly inside Glasgow's Queen Elizabeth University Hospital. They've rarely spoken publicly about the plans, which were first drawn up several years ago. Those involved intended to treat patients with the most serious facial disfigurements, bringing them to Scotland from across the UK. We did this in a highly responsible uh, and planned way. We arranged for training of appropriate staff. Someone went to Paris for a year, spent a, a year with the world's leading face transplant program, came back and we've developed our own protocols. When a possible donor died somewhere in Scotland, this is how the plan would work. A team would remove the facial tissue from their body after the family had given permission. The face would be transported to the operating theatre where a second team would be making the recipient ready. Once inside the operating theatre, damaged tissue is cut away from the recipient as the new face is prepared. First, veins and arteries are connected so it receives blood, carrying oxygen and nutrients from the recipient's heart. The nerves are then joined up, using stitches smaller than a human hair. If necessary, bones are fitted, using titanium screws and plates. The unit would have been known as the National Facial Transplant Service. They'd even gone as far as mapping out record keeping and media management. Its cost had been estimated at a quarter of a million pounds each year. But it wasn't to be. The NHS bosses who shelved the plans didn't want to speak about it on camera. They did send us a short statement, saying the number of patients was small and the plan was to send those from Scotland to France for treatment. They were referring to doctors in Paris, Amiens and other places across France, professionals who pioneered the procedure. You might remember Isabelle Dinois. She received the world's first ever partial face transplant. She passed away earlier this year. The French doctors aren't likely to be accepting patients from the UK anytime soon. They've described the NHS plan as difficult and even dangerous. I think that uh, my uh, Scottish uh, colleagues are perfectly uh, uh, um, capable to do this type of surgery so, because they, they, they are trained and we, we went to Scotland to train them. Dramatic medical practice like face transplants provokes strong views on all sides. Susan Duncan has lived with a serious facial disfigurement since she was a little girl. Her face was reconstructed using bone from other parts of her own body, rather than a donor. But she has a strong sense of what candidates for the procedure live through. Perhaps surprisingly, she's urging caution. I thought it's such a big risk uh, and how long the people actually be able to put up with the drugs and the risk of infection and everything like that. That, that kind of scares me. And nothing, I think, mm, it's, it's all or nothing, basically. Experts say the UK will carry out its first face transplant within the next 10 years. The wider politics of funding the health service will play a part in deciding when and where. The Glasgow team built on efforts begun by the Royal Free Hospital in London. We understand they got as far as screening potential patients, but records weren't kept centrally and the hospital can't offer much information. There are suggestions around 100 people could benefit immediately UK-wide, with one or two Scottish cases coming forward each year. Right now, there's frustration at the delay. This is a procedure that has the ability to revolutionise the lives of a small number of patients 
who are hugely handicapped. They're housebound, they're not able to get out, they're not part, an integral part of our society. And we can convert those people uh, with one intervention to be part of society.